I'd like to welcome everybody. We're going to get started right now with news you can use. We're going to talk about a couple of items today. Then I'm going to tell you a little bit about what we're going to talk about starting Thursday, uh, uh, something called the Great Distortion that's coming up. Uh, but the two things I want to really discuss today um, are what some other folks are in the industry are, are predicting and saying about the, the housing industry going forward. And then this uh, concept of the worst markets out there right now. This is very current information, um, and, and this will be very quick. These are the five worst markets. So if you're in these markets, be very, very, very careful because uh, these prices are dropping to some of these markets two to 5% a month. And this is as of um, late July and into early August. But the, the five worst markets who have lost value this year to date, uh, number five, Phoenix, number four, Nashville, number three, Sacramento, California, number two, Austin, Texas, and the worst market in the U.S. right now, Boise, Idaho. Uh, you guys all remember Boise was at the top of our list a couple of years ago for uh, markets that were going up. And in fact, all of these markets at one point or time in the last 10 years were on an upward trend and added a lot of value, but in some cases, uh, the value, like for example, in Phoenix and not on the list in sixth place was Las Vegas. These went up in excess of 75% last year. So uh, irrational exuberance is the term that I heard used you know, 15, 20 years ago out there. And I, essentially that's what's happened in these markets is people got you know, a case of the sillies, overpaid, fought each other, Personally, I've talked about this on previous news you can use. I think some of this was a result of pump and dump by the high buyers out there, especially in places like Phoenix and Las Vegas. Uh, the old, you know, computer ate my homework while I was asleep type deal using their artificial intelligence to buy properties and inflate the market for the properties they previously bought, uh, leaving all of the natural homeowners high and dry thinking they've got a property valued at 800 when in fact it's really only worth six. And with the current rate of high interest, high inflation, you're seeing these prices drop faster and further than you are in other parts of the country. Um, this is gonna start to become a big diverse country of haves and have nots. And it's gonna come from a different direction and angle that you're going to, then, then you probably are aware of the great, uh, as I said, the great uh, distortion or the great deception, it's gonna be called uh, this time, instead of the Great Recession or the Great Depression, you're going to see this type of thing come up, and uh, we're going to kind of break into it and get it and get a little deep in the weeds starting Thursday afternoon. Um, with that said, let's take a look at a little video here. Actually, it's going to queue up from the head of Redfin. Uh, Redfin is one of those eye buyers out there, and uh, they pro they're a data source provider. They provide uh, comps and uh, information for real estate agents or a marketing source for realtors to get people to list their property. Uh, they have a, a lot of functions. Uh, frankly, I like Redfin much better than I like better. Zillow. Uh, but let's watch it, an interview that the president just did with CNBC on the last day of August uh, here last week. See what he says. Then we'll, we'll go back and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. You indeed are a power player. I heard a realtor friend of mine say that uh, sellers think that it's last year and buyers think that it's next year. Is there any indication that these two groups who have a vested interest in buying and selling homes are going to get on the same page? Haltingly, whenever the market changes, it's really hard to put deals together because you're absolutely right that the buyers are looking at the headlines about what's going to happen in the future and the sellers are thinking about the home down the street that sold for a song four months ago or eight months ago. So during this period, there's going to be plenty of online activity, plenty of touring, but not as many deals. Okay, so I want to ask you about the fact that these contracts are falling through. You say nationwide, 63,000 home purchase agreements fell through in July, 16% of homes why? What's leading buyers to say, yes, we'll buy, and then no, we won't? Well, some of it is economic uncertainty where their portfolio has gotten waxed in the stock market or they're worried about their job. But much of it is that they're just reading the same headlines that you and I are discussing now, that they see that prices are falling, that time is on their side. If they pull out of this deal, they'll be able to get a better one in two or three months. And some of those numbers are truly shocking if you look at 
Jacksonville, Las Vegas, San Antonio, New Orleans, more than one in four contracts is being canceled once you've got a deal at hand. Are you seeing a uh, pandemic hot spots for housing now coming under more strain than other, I don't know, steadier locations? It's a combination. So a place like Boise off 40% in sales. So it just went boom and then it went bust. There's so little volume there that when all these Californians come streaming in, it just sends the housing market haywire. But we're also seeing real softness in California. Prices are down in the San Francisco Bay Area. They didn't go that up that much during the pandemic. And so they don't have as much room to give up. And then in Southern California, you're also seeing really soft demand. Uh, sales are off 40% in San Diego, which is unusual. Traditionally, that's been a pandemic and destination. And you ascribe this softness to, to what exactly? Obviously, it's rising rates is a part of it. Uh, the other ideas are what? Well, some housing demand was pulled forward during the pandemic. So a bunch of people who are going to move got in gear and did it yep. in 2020 and 2021. So I don't know that activity is really that low. It's just low compared to incredible highs. It's a tough comp right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What about the traffic on your site? I mean, are you seeing a lot of buyer traffic and interest? Well, there it's a tale of two markets. So the buyers have come back because they're being drawn in by lower prices. It was truly dreadful in May and June. And now in July and August, it's been stronger, but there's been less listing demand. There are so many sellers who have decided to wait this out. If they don't have to sell, they're not going to sell. When we saw inventory shoot through the roof in the great financial crisis, that was under duress. These people had mortgages that were due and they couldn't pay them. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's so much equity in the market that people are able to wait it out and they will. Very quickly, when people cancel contracts, how do they do that? What are they citing to get out of it? Well, they might say the appraisal came in low. They might say that they found something in the inspection that they don't like. Um, there's all sorts of ways to get out a deal if you don't want to do it. Sometimes people are walking away from their escrow money. We saw that more in the great financial crisis where prices dropped so precipitously mm -hmm. that people said, even though I don't have an out, you can just keep my earnest money mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm going to go shopping elsewhere. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, I think they're just using the inspection contingency and the financing contingency. Okay. So that's kind of the state of affairs right now out there. Uh, you got to be really careful. Keep in mind this, uh, the markets he's primarily talking about are like the ones on the map. They're the bigger cities, you know, the above 400,000 population, that kind of thing, where, uh, where we're seeing still good activity is in that 100 to 400,000 population range and in the states and the areas that meet the criteria that we've talked about, the five star criteria. Uh, that you need to be in in a, in a good market. We're still seeing strong in those, those smaller price markets. There's some trends that are continuing on. One of them that started during the pandemic was people moving from the cities to a more suburban or rural environment. That is gonna continue to happen, I believe, until 2025 before the trend turns and people wanna move back into the cities. Um, and so you're gonna see and the fact that you can work from anywhere, some of the newest, hottest companies out there are work from home uh, resource managers and things like that. Uh, things like Zoom, like we're on right now. And because of the dramatic use of these kinds of things, people, frankly, if they have a choice, they'd rather work at home, uh, spend more time at home and do multiple gigs if they had to versus one job where they got to go someplace and it's in town, they got to sit in a commute, all that kind of stuff. So, um, and uh, fortuitously, the, those folks typically will move from a high price city to a lower price suburb. So, you know, they get more house, uh, they get a better environment, uh, you know, less trafficy, that kind of thing. They can work from home, especially those who are raising, you know, young children, they've got a chance to be around them a lot, uh, that kind of thing. And, uh, so there's some opportunities there that I think are not fully explored yet. And those cities, as I said, typically, uh, you know, they're going to be in the one to 400,000 population range and meet those other criteria. But 
if you're going to focus on a single market, I would definitely pick accordingly. All right, that is it for news. You, oh, let me let me tell you a little bit about this. That, that uh, what we're going to call the, the great distortion, um, and it's a it's a transfer of wealth that is happening. I think over the next few years, uh, 150 trillion dollar transfer of wealth. Uh, you know, a few people are going to get rich and richer, and a lot of people are going to get poorer. Um, and that's always been the case in society, but it's going to dramatically increase. And I'm going to show you some charts that Ashley and I are working on that uh, will will show up there Thursday night and kind of give you an idea of how this all started. It hint hint. It started back in 1971, almost 50 years, a little over 50 years ago, uh, when Nixon took us off the gold standard, and then the government decided it was wise to just print money when he needed it. Uh, what we have defined or called quantitative um, easing which is essentially just print money. So we'll talk about that Thursday night, explain how that works and how it affects you in the housing market and more specifically where you can go to make money long-term. All right, that's it for news you can use.